The government has released its first climate risk assessment, warning rising temperatures and extreme weather events will change the way Australians live, work and survive. The first stage identifies 56 significant risks over seven categories, including defence, health, economy and others. Based on the severity of their impact, the government has chosen 11 of those as priority areas for their national adaption response. Further analysis of these 11 risks will make up the second stage of the assessment, which is due at the end of the year, with the final adaptation plan expected in 2025. For more details on this report, I'm joined in the studio by reporter Nick Grimm. Very good to see you. Hi, Rose. Uh, so Australians across the country have been hit with extreme weather, other natural disasters over just the last few years. So why is this risk assessment being done now? Yeah, Australians are no strangers to the impact of, of climate change. And a lot of these factors that are being covered by this risk assessment won't, won't exactly come as a surprise to anybody, but this is the first time that the Australian Government has collated all this information together. Now, it's required to do this as uh, one of the uh, conditions of the uh, Paris Agreement on climate change, but the uh, Federal Government says it's got a lot of catching up to do, and it's, uh, it's arguing that there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of delay and a lack of action over the past decade, pointing to the uh, previous Government there. But what they're doing now is that they've put this uh, first first stage of their risk assessment together. They're also today asking Australians to make submissions on how they think they're going to be impacted by uh, climate change. And this will help inform the process going forward to, to give Australians, I guess, a better idea of where the key challenges are going to lie. Okay, so what are some of the key risks? facing the nation from climate change? Well, we saw them on the screen there a moment ago. I mean, things like uh, defence, uh, the, the more that our uh, military forces are called upon to, to help our stretched emergency services personnel to respond to, to uh, extreme weather events, that's going to have an impact on our, our national security and defence. There's going to be impacts on the health system as a result of not least because of the rising temperatures and the impacts that's going to have on, on people health infrastructure and the the built environment where well, you're going to see impacts on our critical infrastructure not least because of bushfire or flood but just because of the extra st stresses and strains that will come onto the system the natural environment there'll be an impact on the on the environment now this is this is crucial not only in the, in the area of biodiversity but will also have an impact on primary industries for example and they're estimating that because as temperatures rise we'll have have an increase in uh, in previously uh, minor or unknown diseases. That's going to have an impact on farmers' cropping. It'll have the impact on our fish stocks in our our ocean. Not to mention in our own uh, burdened hospital systems. So how will the risk assessment be used to help mitigate the effects of climate change and what will that look like in practice? Yeah, well, it's all going to feed towards what the federal government's calling a national adaptation plan. Now, this is a strategy for basically how we're going to, to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Nothing I think that uh, is anybody is, is suggesting at the moment is going to make it go away. What they're wanting to do is to try and ensure that we can live in the most successful uh, manner possible with these changes which are going to hit us all. Nick, thank you. You're welcome.